But next this afternoon, the third of five programmes on the life and career of Luciano Pavarotti. Today, Sean Rafferty explores Pavarotti's growing stage career. After his debut and his fame in London, across the Atlantic to conquer the new world, on the cover of Time magazine, he was opera's golden tenor. America had really taken Pavarotti to its heart. Adulation for his fabulous voice, his charismatic presence, his ease. But behind the smiles, Richard Bonning and his wife, the great coloratura soprano Joan Sutherland, saw a rather more human figure. Luciano was a very nervous performer for the simple reason that he was an innate musician but not one who had studied at all. And so he couldn't read music and he very often was never too sure when he should make his entrances. And on stage he was very nervous and hung on to the soprano like grim death. She used to come home from singing performances with him with black and blue marks on her arms and I'm not exaggerating. He felt as though he needed something to hang on to. It was usually my arm. My mum and Luciano's mum worked side by side in the tobacco factory in Modena. And since I am some months older than Luciano, they would take us to the wrong department. We were infants and we were already together. And then we've been there until we were three years old, I think. And then they sent us to nursery school and we have photographs. Well, we had some photographs, now I don't even know where they are. Wearing school uniforms, of course, but you know, when you go on stage, you don't think your nerves are before the performance when you're on stage. So we held each other hands and we went and we gave, I believe, the best performance. On stage, sometime it was a little difficult because I wanted him to sing a little more to me sometime, to be a little more relating to my character. And sometime he had a tendency of uh, separating himself because he was more thinking of his voice. And of course, everyone wanted him uh, first as a singer. As uh, we go along with our careers, and we sang so many times together. We sang, I mean, years and years together. But not only singing, but we became really very good friends with his wife. Uh, and then I had my children. They were visiting each other. And uh, really, a life together in family and happy. I mean, it really, it was fantastic. Then life take us in different ways. I always was uh, very professional, especially in a debut of an opera. I wanted to be always rehearsing and to be as close as perfect I could. And we begin to have some uh, argument uh, on rehearsing and everything. And, uh, and then for a moment, we didn't get along very well. And I was so much in pain when I was thinking of him because of that. And I thought that also he was in pain. But we didn't have the courage to approach again to do it, to do peace, because there was no war. There was just misunderstanding. Anyway, and that peace came. It came on the 40th uh, anniversary of his career. I went to see his performance here at the Met of Aida, and uh, I said, I have to go to say hello to him because it's absolutely stupid. So I went to his dressing room and he kissed me and he hugged me so that uh, even to think about, I'm crying. And then he said, don't you think it's about time that we get together as a friend again? I said, of course it's about time. And uh, invited me to his uh, party that he had in Modena for for it. So I went, I sang for him, and peace was done. <laughs> but when Decker asked him to record Werther, and we had actually a bet, and of course I won the bet because suddenly he announced, oh, my public want me to sing Lelys at Amor, and I don't want to disappoint my public. And, well... But no, he was very bad about learning things. He didn't know Maria Stuart. Decker had to cancel for a whole year and then reschedule. Cost them a great deal of money. When he came to record Adriana Lucuvra, he didn't know a note of it. And they had to throw him out and get in Bergonzi, who was quite lovely. 
And that ends today's programme on Luciano Pavarotti. Tomorrow, Sean Rafferty goes with Pavarotti to the movies and hears from the next generation of tennis. That's just after the news at five o'clock. And you can find full details of the series on the Radio 3 website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio 3.